we're the munitions workers, aren't we? Factory. Yeah, munition factory workers. Roger, let's wait for the door to shut. Oh, that's two workers. Yes, Um, if the ladies were at work, how would the children eat if there was, um, like, guns going on and they would, like, um, kill the crops so they couldn't go to the shops because there's no shops? Good question. Well, the, the children, so that the, where, when the women are at work, so we're at work all the time at the, in, the, in the factories, and most of the time our husbands and our oldest sons are off fighting, and so the, the, the small children, well, sometimes they're, in, um, sometimes they're in school, sometimes they're being looked after by older children. Um, there is some food, but you're right, there's definitely food shortages. Things have got a lot worse since the war started, and there isn't that much food to go around. Um, so you have to queue up quite a lot of the time. It's got worse and worse during the war. Sometimes you have to go up to Northfield, and sometimes you have to spend ages in a queue waiting to see if you can get some more food. Um, it's not so bad where we live because we're close to farms and where there's farms you can normally get hold of some vegetables and things. It's harder when you live right in the city, there's a lot, a lot less um, options for food. So we're probably yeah. quite lucky being out here. But we had to turn Grandad's Rose Garden into a cabbage patch, didn't we? Last oh week? yes, everybody has to, to um, instead of having nice gardens, they've got to just uh, instead turn their gardens over into making um, food because there's sort of definitely food shortages. Who looks after your children? Well, it's generally other members of the family. So sometimes, like you, you're, um, if you're lucky enough to still have your parents around, so they might be, they might, they might be their grandparents look after them. And sometimes it's just their older brothers and sisters. That's really who ends up looking after them. So how, how old are you? I'm eight. Eight. Well, you might have a, if you had a big sister, a big brother, 11, 12, they'd be looking after you. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be looking after the younger the ones. The younger ones. Yeah. You'd be doing the cleaning. Yeah. You'd be doing cooking, you'd be doing what Looking else? Looking after the fire at home, staking yeah. the fire up ready for when your mum comes home from work. So it's quite hard work being a child at this point, really. Not much how, time for play. No. How do your children learn? Well, schools aren't really, haven't really taken off properly in, uh, at this time. So we don't really, there, some people want to go to schools, but not everyone by a long stretch. And certainly, we, our children don't go to school, do they? They have to look after things at home. No, and, th and in some of the schools it's hard as well because a lot of the teachers have gone off to fight in the war and so a lot of the schools have got lots more extra children coming in. So sometimes the school's closed in the morning and then one school's open in the morning and then the other children go in the afternoon. So where you might have gone to school all day, now some children are only going to school half a day because they can only manage enough teachers just for, to run schools for half a day for each, each group of children. So children are probably learning quite a lot less and they're also probably working a lot harder around the house. How would they Well, they, they get used to using the, the hearth. They've got a coal-fired hearth. They put the coal in to heat up and they'll, they'll do the cooking, cooking for the whole family. When mum gets back, she'll have a meal on the table. Mm. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> How do they survive? How do they survive? What the, the, do you mean the children or the families or who, who do you mean? Oh, families. The families. Well, in, in Birmingham there are, some, there are some people at the end of the war, some, so obviously all the people are going out to fight, a lot of those people didn't come back after the war. The families that stayed in Birmingham during the war, well, they, they didn't do too badly. There was a few bombs in Birmingham but not very much in the First World War. So generally people were alright, but sometimes people got ill and sometimes people got very weak because there were a lot of food shortages. So it was quite difficult difficult to have a good life during the, the uh, First World War, that was the main thing. Although, at least with us working in the factory, you're earning quite good money. So you can bring some good money home to your families and that makes life a little bit easier, maybe. How do you make the bullets? Well, we're involved in making the grenades, so that means we're stacking gunpowder into the grenade shells like that. So you put the gunpowder in, um, and you have to be really, really careful because obviously any sort of small spark could cause that to go off. And I have definitely had a friend who's hurt themselves before. It's not, it's not unusual for friends to lose things like your hand or even an arm if there's an explosion when you're working with a hand grenade. So you've got to be really, really careful. It's a dangerous job.
Where do they live? Well, we just we, we live in uh, this area here and just have to go to work up the road in Northfield, so that's where the local make munitions factory is. And a lot of the factories are in town, but people go to those factories because the money's good, so it's good work, and because women have to go and work because they need them. So Birmingham's quite a good place for work at this time. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Well done. They're really good questions. Yeah, brilliant.